Thank you for joining me today. I have a burden which will be the lighter if I can share it with you. It's about Good News Unlimited. GNU has reached a fork in the road. Why so? Well, you remember, 33 years ago, in the heat of Christian controversy, Good News Unlimited was formed. But many of those dear people who launched GNU are now like me, getting rather old. Many have gone, and the rest, like me, will be going soon. That's why I say GNU has reached a fork in the road. New challenges demand new plans, new schemes, new prayers, new ambitions, new helpers. Your representatives at GNU have new plans, prayerfully conceived, plans we believe that God can implement to the blessing of many thousands, perhaps even millions, if you will be our helpers. Often in the Bible, we read about God doing a new thing. He did a new thing when in the days of cruel King Herod, the Lord Jesus Christ was born in a stable. That was a new thing that would change the world and change your life and mine and the lives of millions of people. Many centuries later, Martin Luther stumbled upon a Bible and this was to be a new thing. He translated it into the German language, a wonderful, wonderful translation. Thus began the Reformation, lifting millions out of darkness, despair, ignorance and fear. It was a new thing. The years went by and there was a cobbler, a shoemaker, who gave a sermon Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. And he went to India. William Carey launched the modern missionary movement and it encircled the world within a century. That was a new thing, the missionary movement. This is the way God is delighted to worship. He took a failed Anglican minister, depressed, discouraged, feeling he'd done nothing right, but when he heard Martin Luther on justification by faith, a light dawned, a light that would illuminate all of England and ultimately the world. John Wesley opened more toll gates than any man in England. After learning the good news of the gospel, he said, I was never downcast for more than 15 minutes at a time. 10,000 cares for me were no heavier than the hairs of my head. That man's life was a new thing. You say, well, GNU is a very little affair. Will God dabble with it? God delights in little things. He takes the smallest acorn and makes a mighty oak. It was a miner's son, remember, that began the Protestant Reformation. God delights in little things. He planted a seed in the bosom of a peasant woman there in Bethlehem and the whole world has been changed ever since. Today I'm asking you, will you join with me and your other friends who are working day by day with GNU, will you join with us all to enable God to do a new thing, something that can change not just GNU but perhaps with God's blessing, change the world. What do we have in mind? Well, you may know we've launched a new website and that has all sorts of possibilities. I've written about 30 books. They're all now available via the computer. Anyone all around the world can pick up any of the books. The commentary on Romans, right with God right now. Even my Manchester PhD dissertation, The Coming Worldwide Calvary. Though when I did it for Manchester, it was called the eschatological teaching of the abomination of desolation. That was a different title, but it meant the same thing. All 30 books are now available. Over a thousand sermons can now be picked up. 
the sermons that have been preached in the last 33 years about the gospel. We hope that with the Lord's blessing, as a new website takes hold around the world, that small groups will accumulate, not churches, just little groups meeting perhaps once a week to talk about the grace of God, the goodness of God, not to talk about religious controversies as such. God is not in the heart of that as a rule, but to talk about the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace of God, to talk about Calvary and what it means to us. We who are guilty, we who are dying, we who need help every day in all our decisions in our battle against our sinful nature. You might ask, what has GNU got that's unique? Well, we're surrounded by religious voices, but may I assure you that what you suspect is true. The real everlasting gospel is very difficult to find on the media, very difficult to find if you go from church to church. Most pulpits are occupied by good men who are telling people to be good and then they'll have a chance of heaven. But you know, the real gospel is not that. The gospel is for sinners. You don't have to be good to be saved. You do have to be saved to be good. And whosoever will may come, and all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. It's not who you are, it's whose you are. And you can come just as you are. He won't leave us just as we are. We don't have to worry about what God thinks of us, only what he thinks of Christ, our substitute. When you hear the real gospel of the New Testament, the historic objective gospel that was preached by Christ and Paul, by Luther, by Wesley, then you know you have the verdict of the last judgment the moment you believe. You have everlasting life the moment you believe. You are accepted in the beloved. You're complete in him despite stumblings, failures, a hundred or more a day, not counted against us. Not one drop of the wrath of God can ever fall upon a believer. Discipline, yes, we all need improving. Wrath of God, not ever. That is a rare gospel. It's like the pearl of great price. It's not easy to get hold of unless you really come to understand what the New Testament is teaching. So this is what's unique about GNU. We are endeavouring to present to the world the same gospel that Paul presented, that Luther presented, that Wesley presented. We're not telling people that they must have the gift of tongues to be saved. We're not telling them that whatever their sickness, it can be healed in a moment. We're not telling them if they have enough faith, they can have anything and everything. We're not telling them that to be a Christian is to become very rich and you don't have to be poor. No, these things are twistings of precious gospel truths. We're getting to the heart of the matter that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we hope to offer to the world over a thousand gospel sermons, 30 gospel books. We hope new groups to be formed all over the world. These are some of the things on our heart. It will take sacrifice. And when some people hear about what we're going to do, they will take fright. There will be risks, dear friends, but there's a greater risk if we don't. If you don't like change, you will like irrelevance even less. There is a risk. But with God, all things are possible. He said, if you have as much faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, be ye plucked up and cast into the sea, and it will obey you. The same Christ said, on the eve of Calvary, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. He that loveth his life will lose it. He that hates his life in this world will find it. What am I saying? I'm saying a wonderful new gospel movement triggered by GNU is possible. It will take faith and it will take sacrifice. Sacrifice. All of us have been caring for our little stock, our little store. We didn't want to lose any of it. But may I say something to you that's very solemn 
and I say it to my own heart, any life spent on itself is only sewerage. The only life worthwhile is that which Christ described in terms of sacrifice. If there'd been no crown of thorns, there could never be a crown of glory. If there hadn't been a wounded, bruised, bleeding body, there could never be a transformed, resurrected, translated body. If there hadn't been an evil, bad Friday, which strangely we call Good Friday, there could never have been an Easter Sunday. No gains, no pains. That's the worldly expression. But Christ says only death can lead to life. So we are asking you to join us in sacrifice. Will you give to help GNU make these dreams possible? We need at the moment, at this moment, about $50,000. Where it'll come from, we don't know, unless you give it. Unless you give it. We do need money and we need it desperately. You will remember that when you heard the gospel, your heart was thrilled. Your fears rolled away. You knew God accepted you despite your weaknesses, your failures, your follies. You knew you were accepted because of Christ what he did, and that your mistakes were covered, and that he would give you the Holy Spirit to enable you to battle every day against the world, the sin and death. And at that time, a desire was born in your heart that other people too might be helped. That's what we're asking for. I could find many ways of living much easier than what I do. I could bury myself in books and with a computer but because of your generosity and your friendship, I have been able to preach the gospel these last 33 years since Glacier View and decades before that in many countries of the world, in churches of different denominations, to people of different colours. And I know that's what you want for the future. There are many things you can do. Immediate financial contribution now would help us with our urgent requirement of 50,000. But when you make your last will and testament, will you remember the gospel in that? You know, neither you nor me can recall our first day, but we were born and you and I can't think of our last day, but we will die unless Jesus comes soon. I'm saying these things from my heart in the hope that in your last hours, in your last days, you will have a holy content because you know you've given to help the gospel to go to needy people. That's what we're asking you to do and to do now. We need your help so very much. I give you my heartfelt thanks for listening to me. You know that for over 30 years I have never put pressure on anybody for money. Never. But we've come to a new challenge. We've come to a new era. Our original founders are dying off. Soon the funds will dry off too. At the moment we're okay. And I intend to work along with someone I'm going to introduce to you very, very soon who will take my place. When, I don't know. Next year, next decade, only God knows. But I'm saying this today to solicit your help and in the hope that when you do all you can, not just with your last will and testament, but with gifts now, because you love Christ and you love others. You know the surest sign you've been born again? When you have a constant desire to help other people. Will you help GNU to help them do that? Soon we'll meet around the great white throne. There'll be no solitary persons there. Everybody there will be with others, the ones they've invoid, invited to join them. The ones for whom we've prayed that the imprint of the cross might come upon their hearts too. I thank you with all my heart. God bless you.